Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins with a veteran thief Keith Ripley in New York, approaching a pool that is full of men, and shooting one of them. Moving on to another thief named Gabriel Martin, Ripley observes him walking, and immediately begins to pursue him. Martin takes out a gun while riding the train, and steals a briefcase containing a lot of money from two other passengers. In addition to stealing money, he is also a diamond thief. Two officers suddenly see that Martin is armed, and they immediately begin to pursue him. The thief makes his way onto the roof of the train, and begins to crawl over it. Martin exits the train as soon as it comes to a halt, and disappears among the crowd. Ripley is aware that Martin is leaving, but he acts as though he is unaware of anything. The authorities examine the records from the surveillance room, but they are unable to identify the person who committed the theft. During the course of one night, Martin makes an attempt to sell the stolen jewelry, however, Ripley catches him from behind. Martin doesn't put up much of a fight when Ripley grabs the jewelry from him, since he recognizes that the gun he's holding isn't actually loaded. Ripley intervenes and tells him they have to have a conversation right now. Ripley is confronted by two Russian mobsters, who suddenly emerge from a car. They inform Ripley that he must continue to make payments on the amount he owes to their boss. The conversation continues with Ripley informing Martin that he has an offer for him, and requesting that the two of them meet in a pub. Ripley is in debt to the Russian mafia, and he seeks Martin's assistance in pulling off one final robbery, so that he may clear his due. During the robbery that took place in the subway, Ripley observed Martin in action, and was impressed by his escape. Ripley had previously eliminated his previous accomplice, Victor Korolenka, before they were able to successfully carry out their plan earlier. The execution of Ripley's plan requires the theft of two Fabergé eggs, each valued at $20 million. Ripley allegedly killed Victor because he feared that the latter would inform him to the New York Police Department, which would have resulted in incarceration for Ripley. The next day, as Ripley goes to finish some business in progress, Martin stops to read the newspaper. Here he meets a woman named Alexandra, and they start talking. Ripley returns a short while later, and it turns out that he knows Alexandra. It turns out Alexandra is Victor's daughter, and Ripley does not like the two getting close. Next, Ripley explains the plan to Martin, which involves stealing from a Russian museum, owned by the Romanovs, a Russian mafia. The gang smuggles Russian treasures into the country, and bribes the NYPD with large donations and expensive equipment. As they take a walk, Ripley explains that he wants to steal those treasures not just for the money, but for a caprice of his own. He is convinced he was born to steal and wants to die doing it. He gives Martin a rare coin, signifying that they are now business partners. Martin surprises Alexandra with a bouquet of flowers the next day, taking them to her place of work. After work, he recommends they get together in a Russian club, but she is not easily persuaded by his suggestion. He tells her that he will wait for her, and leaves. Moving on to Lt. Vaben and Michaels, a new recruit for the police department. After discovering that the gems that were taken from the train belong to Russian gangsters, Vaben is convinced that Ripley and Martin intend to steal the Romanovs of their riches. Michael is reluctant to believe this, since it would be similar to taking a step into an unknown but inevitable death. Lt. Weber harbors a grudge against Ripley, and has spent the last 22 years of his career trying to bring Ripley to justice. However, he has never had sufficient evidence to bring charges against Ripley. Before Ripley shot him, Victor had just accepted the role as Ripley's best man. Later in the evening, Martin is hanging around in the club, waiting for Alexandra to show up. When she finally gets there, the two of them start dancing. The conversation between them continues, and Alexandra eventually comes to the conclusion that Victor was assassinated by the Russian Mafia, because they wanted Ripley to pay off Victor's debts. On the other hand, Victor owed money to the Russian Mafia, led by Nikki Petrovich. Nikki was willing to cancel the debt in exchange for Victor's assistance in stealing the eggs. Because Victor wanted to look out for Alexandra, he declined the offer. So he went to the NYPD for witness protection, but the Russians ended up killing him nonetheless. When Alexandra gets back to her house, she learns she has misplaced her keys to the residence. She becomes aware that Martin is present within. Following that, the two decide to share the night together. After sleeping through the night, Martin opens his eyes the next morning to see Ripley standing in front of him. In addition to advising him to maintain his distance from Alexandra, he tells him to get dressed. Ripley lets him know that there will be a celebration held at the Romanov Museum later today. Martin sews a button onto Zikov's clothing that resembles a miniature video camera. Zikov works as a guide at the museum. In the evening, the two of them go undercover as police officers, and infiltrate the party at the museum, in order to acquire information about the vault where the eggs are hidden. In the meantime, Lieutenant Weber approaches Ripley, knowing that he did not have an official invitation, 
yet he cannot prove it, and walks away. Shortly thereafter, Zikov, with the camera button attached, begins to tour the museum to guests. Ripley and Martin discover all the security measures in the safe and are amazed. They discover that the eggs they are to steal are inside another, even more secure safe. Martin becomes demoralized, and says it will be impossible to pull off the robbery. However, he spills a glass on Zikov, and steals something from him. Then together with Ripley, they go outside. Meanwhile, a group of officers take pictures of the two. Lieutenant Weber talks to the superiors, and informs them they must take precautions, as he is sure that the museum will be robbed soon. Nevertheless, the detectives do not listen to him, and say they have other things to think about. Meanwhile, Ripley and Martin get to work and start working on the plan. In the gym, Martin manages to steal Zikov's handprint. Then they manage to steal the recording of Sergeyev's voice, which is another key component to open the safe. One day, Martin surprises Alexandra with a prepared lunch, but she claims she does not eat Chinese. However, the two still spend the time in their own way. Then Alexandra says she is afraid he will end up like Victor, since he is a thief. Later, Martin meets with Ripley, and asks why Victor is dead. Ripley explains the situation to him and says they have no choice but to steal the eggs, because the Russian Mafia will not let them live. The Russian Mafia, led by Nikki Petrovich, gets impatient and kidnaps Alexandra, telling Ripley that he must steal the two Fabergé eggs from the Russian museum to get her back. Nikki says the eggs belong to him, as they were made by his great-grandfather, and stolen from the Kremlin. With Alexandra's involvement, Martin is now determined to help steal the eggs. One night, the robbery begins, and the two make a hole in a wall underground to enter the museum. A security guard tells the others that he is hearing noises, but they tell him that it is just underground work. Thieves sneak in and set off an alarm. A guard goes to check, but finds nothing, and tells them to turn off the alarm. Soon after, the thieves disarm it, and take the card that will give them access to the doors. In addition, Martin has hacked the cameras, and the guards see pre-recorded videos. At gunpoint, the guard taken hostage tells the others that this is just a prank. Martin and Ripley tie him up, and venture into the museum, while the other guards eat cake. Martin uses the imprint and Ripley the audio recording. Once they manage to open the safe, Martin crawls across the floor over a sort of cart, to avoid the security lasers. Once past this point, Martin deactivates the alarm with a device. They then start to open the next safe. In the process, Lt. Weber learns about the alarm at the museum, and immediately realizes that it is Ripley. Once he finds the code to the safe, Martin finds the box with the eggs. Suddenly, Martin points his gun at Ripley, and orders him to give the eggs. Martin reveals that he is an undercover Miami cop, placed by Weber to capture Ripley, and leaves Ripley locked in the vault. In the process, police arrive at the museum. The security guards realize that something is wrong. Martin takes one hostage, and orders the others to leave their weapons behind. Subsequently, he manages to escape outside, just as the police are entering inside. Zikov and Sergei find Ripley in the safe, who offers them a deal. Martin informs Weber that he has fulfilled the deal, and now he must take the eggs to the Russian mobster, to free Alexandra. After Alexandra is freed, Martin is forced to meet with Nikki. It has come to light that the eggs that were taken from the safe are constructed out of wood. Martin arrives at the police station the next morning, after the police pick up Nikki, and the officers tell him to verify that it is indeed him. But it turns out that the man they have in jail is not the man Martin met, and that the man he met was actually Victor, who faked his death with Ripley's assistance. It is revealed that Ripley had escaped, making a deal with the Romanovs, and cleared the vault of all the smuggled items, including the eggs, before the police could inspect it. This meant there is no evidence that anything has been stolen, and that Martin's testimony would be pointless, because his actions were kept out of the book, to prevent Ripley from finding out about them. In addition, Martin's relationship with Alexandra compromises him, and as a result, Ripley had to be let go. Alexandra represented him in court as his attorney, at the bond hearing. Later, Ripley calls Martin from an airport tarmac, getting ready to depart with Victor to meet an egg buyer. During their conversation, Ripley reveals that he and Victor have always been aware that Martin was a law enforcement officer. Martin subsequently makes a second trip to New York to see Alexandra, who chose to stay there, and she confirms that her love for him is genuine. Finally, Martin makes the choice to become a genuine thief. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.